Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're talking about the tropics once more. We now have three potential tropical disturbances, which is really really just crazy at this point in time. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description or the pinned comment down below where you can help support the channel and receive awesome content in return. That's also where you can find our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups in the same locations. Alright, now for today's comment of the day, I want to know what do you think is going to happen with this third disturbance that we have offshore of Africa, or it's at least moving offshore of Africa. Do you think we will eventually see a named storm out of that one, or do you think it's going to fizzle out? Alright, let me know in the comments down below, and let me know why, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. All right, now we're taking a look first off at Invest 97L, which is now located just to the south of Haiti and Dominican Republic, as you can see there, and it has a 40% chance of development within the next two days. It does look to be a little bit more organized than it was throughout most of the day yesterday, and as you can see on the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, it has an 80% chance of development, so really good chance that we see a named storm out of this one. Not guaranteed, but pretty much uh, very close to guaranteed. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about Invest 98L in the same fashion. We're going to take a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook and the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. Take a look at what those have to say. And then we're going to take a little sneak peek at our third disturbance. And then we're going to start getting into satellite imagery, uh, spaghetti models, intensity guidance, things of that nature. All right, now, as you can see, we actually have a 90% chance of this one developing within the next two days. It's very close. Looking at satellite imagery here that you can see on screen, it really just looks like it is almost a tropical storm. It's like right there. So I think it's going to happen probably today, if not very early tomorrow. Let's take a look at that five-day outlook as well right here, just real quick. And as you can see, we also have a 90% chance. Obviously, it's not going to go down. It's going to go up. So really, we're going to see this one develop. It's almost guaranteed. It looks like it almost is a tropical storm. So I expect very shortly we're going to see this one at tropical depression status, maybe even by the 11 a.m. update. And then tropical storm status should follow very, very soon after. Now, here's that third disturbance that I was mentioning before. Uh, and over the next tw uh, two days, it has a 0% chance of development. It's still over Africa, but this one had some very tall clouds. It had a lot of intensity for a disturbance that was still over Africa. And I think the potential is quite high, but also uh, the chance of this one just fizzling out is also quite high as well. So this one's really a big question mark for me. Uh, and over the next five days, it has a 20% chance of development. Probably after that point, we will see an increase. But for now, we have a 20% chance of development over the next five days for this third disturbance that is currently over Africa, and it will be moving offshore very shortly. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at satellite imagery for each of these storms individually. Take a look at even a fourth disturbance that we could see shortly. And then we're going to take a look at the spaghetti models, intensity guidance. And then we're going to do our direct weather forecast for these storms. All right, so here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery for Invest 97L, first off, which is the one in the Southern Caribbean. As you can see, there is some quite tall clouds in there. It is uh, getting some banding up to the north, which is really a, a good sign that this storm is pretty intense. But for right now, I think that we have a moderate chance of seeing this one become a tropical storm uh, over the next two days. But within the next five days, I think it will get its act together. And that's pretty much what the National Hurricane Center is thinking as well. So it's pretty likely we see a named storm out of this one. It's really just when is the big question mark. Uh, and there's some pretty tall clouds in there indicated by those white shades there, as you can see. So we really need to watch this one closely. Here's Invest 98L on satellite imagery. And you can see it has some nice swirl to it, some taller clouds there on the more southern bands. Again, indicated by those whites. Again, I'm almost certain this one will be a tropical depression very shortly and a tropical storm probably before day's end today. Let's go ahead and take a look at that African disturbance as well here. We can see Invest 98L on the very very left hand side of your screen there but that's our new disturbance there uh towards the more right hand side of the screen very big disturbance uh very unorganized but usually these storms get their act together once they're uh pretty far offshore of africa so this one has a lot of time to work with but really it's just a big question of if it'll even do anything but for now uh, it has some potential and we will be talking about it probably in the near future all right now let's take a zoomed outlook where we can see all of africa you can count one two three 
That's Invest 98L on the very left. That's our African disturbance there in the very middle. But to the right, you can see that there is going to be more disturbances moving forward, most likely that are heading uh, very fast westward towards the Atlantic Ocean. We're not going to slow down anytime soon, and there is more disturbances on the way. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance for Invest 97L and Invest 98L, and also the intensity guidance. And then again, we're going to get into our direct weather forecast for both of these invests. All right, so here's our spaghetti model guidance for Invest 97L. You can see there is a sharp curve that is being indicated within the next 48 hours uh, to the north. That's going to be a big boom or bust time frame for this storm. And you guys have seen me use that in the thumbnails. A lot of people are like, what does that even mean? Basically, boom would be this storm rapidly intensifies and it does have high potential to intensify quite significantly. Uh, but the bust is that it can hit Central America here, as you can see, especially that red one to the south, the AVNI model. That would really lower the chances of this one intensifying uh, quite far, uh, and that would be the bust. So boom or bust means there is 50-50 chance this one can do a lot of things. It can completely fall apart, or it could intensify quite far. Uh, that's what boom or bust means. So that land interaction down there for Central America really is going to make a difference. If we're more towards where that pink model has us going, uh, where we're quite far off of Central America, we can see this one intensify a lot. If it hits Central America, that's going to lower those odds. Not really... Uh, not really making it impossible, but it is just going to lower those odds percentage-wise. I also want to draw your attention to the fact that each of these models does have it making its way to the Gulf one way or another, either way. Uh, and again, I mentioned in yesterday's stream, and I think I might have mentioned it in yesterday's video as well, uh, nearby Texas, we did have a high-pressure system there uh, nearby. And I think that's why a lot of these models have it going further east than those regions uh, I think that's the reasoning behind that. Uh, a lot of them are having it curve further north. I think somewhere between Louisiana and, and Florida is the biggest chance for impact. I also see the chance of it going south of those areas of high pressure. That's what the AVNI model is showing. A lot of models were showing that happened yesterday, actually. So pretty much every option is on the table at this point. Uh, by the way, I always find these spaghetti model graphics from tropicaltidbits.com. Levi Cohen owns that website. Great website if you would like to gather more information. That's a great place to find it. I use his maps a lot, so I really want uh, to be sure to shout him out. And make sure you guys head over there. It's a great, great website. That's also where I get a lot of my model guidance from as well. Here's our model intensity guidance for Invest 97L. You can see we only have one model that doesn't show this one becoming a tropical storm. And it's that red model that had it having a lot of land interaction, believe it or not. So, but pretty much every single other model outside of that one does have us at least reaching tropical storm status. And again, some of these models have a very strong uh, uh, option here, including the HWFL, which is one of the models that did not have any land interaction. It had it going in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. And you can see that one actually brings us eventually to hurricane status. That shows you that if there's no land interaction, it would get the boom. It would go into the boom. But the AVNI is an example of the bust. And you can see the very large difference between what those two models are calling for, all based on how little land interaction this one has. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the model guidance for Invest 98L. Okay, we're going to take a look at the spaghetti models, the ensemble models, the intensity guidance, and then we're going to get into our forecast for both of these. Now, also in yesterday's stream, if you missed it, I mentioned the fact that if this one doesn't hit Haiti, Dominican Republic, Cuba, that makes a huge difference there. If it hits those islands, it's going to break up quite a bit, not completely dissipate, but it would lower the chances of this one being a very strong storm. If it's north of those islands, pretty much the potential, the sky's the limit uh, with it. So you can see most of these models have it very, just, just north of these islands, and that's very significant. That would be pretty much a worst case scenario for this storm. So we're going to want to see uh, what these models do moving forward. Is it going to hit Haiti and Dominican Republic? Is it going to go north? That's a massive difference in the forecast here. But as you can see, within the next 72 hours, it's going to be approaching Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic. So we're going to really need to watch out for those areas. Uh, also the Bahamas, you're going to want to be on standby for this system uh, because this one might be heading straight for you. Florida, also it's maybe about time you start paying attention because this one potentially has you in its crosshairs. Let's take a look at the GEFS, which is the GFS Ensemble model, and it pretty much shows the same thing as most of those models showed, uh, except we get a more extend extended outlook here towards the end. You can see a lot of 
it, a lot of them kind of spread out, so that means the confidence is lowering towards the end of this model run. Uh, but Florida seems to be a popular uh, hit for a lot of these models, so you're going to want to really watch out. Also, the Bahamas, those reds are indicating a stronger storm, so we might get a pretty strong storm here from in Invest 98L. You're going to want to watch out. Uh, this storm looks like it has the highest potential out of any of these storms we're talking about today. Here's your GEPS, which is our Canadian ensemble model. And it shows a lot of the same that the GEFS model shows, except a lot of these show an out to sea option, which would be best case scenario, the least land interaction, the least people being impacted by this storm. Uh, but still, either way, we're going to want to pay attention anywhere on the East Coast, the Bahamas, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Puerto Rico, and even the Gulf still, you're going to want to pay attention. This storm could be quite a major one. Here's the intensity guidance, and you can see it only, most of these models only go out to about uh, hours 132, which is just past five days out. And as you can see, uh, we only have one model that doesn't show us reaching tropical storm status, just like Invest 97L, uh, but a lot of these models have us intensifying quite quickly towards Category 1 hurricane strength, uh, and even we have a couple showing Category 2 or Category 3 status. That seems to be the ceiling over the next five days for this storm. Uh, and obviously after that point, it could become even more intense than that. It could be less intense than that. We're going to want to watch this storm very closely because it definitely could become a hurricane. It could become our next hurricane, which would obviously mean a more impactful storm. But even if it's just a tropical storm, you're still going to want to watch out. That could cause some pretty major impacts, especially to a lot of the islands. All right, now let's get into our official direct weather forecast for both of these storms. First off, Invest 97L. Uh, as you can see, I do expect that we could see some interaction there with Central America and also potentially the Yucatan Peninsula, but there's also a chance it goes north of those regions and kind of hits that sweet spot uh, where we would see more of the boom scenario uh, where it doesn't really have any land interaction. Either way, I'm kind of siding with this kind of curve northward. I think it's probably going to curve northward and maybe even back uh, towards the east, maybe back towards Florida. There is still a chance it goes south of that high pressure uh, and hits Mexico. We're going to want to watch it closely. There's also a slim chance it hits Texas or Louisiana, although I think high pressure is probably blocking it from hitting those regions. That's pretty far out, so it's not really uh, anything we should be talking about. That's past five days, uh, but it is good to kind of keep an eye on the system. If you're anywhere in the Gulf, I would say you should probably be paying attention. Here's Invest 98L. Again, I think it's probably going to go north of Dominican Republic and Cuba and Haiti. Uh, but there is the chance that it does hit those islands as well. So you're going to want to watch out if you do live there. Also, Puerto Rico seems to be a spot 98L could hit. But we're also watching for the Bahamas there and Florida as well, which seem to be right after the five-day mark seem to be an area this one could be impacting. Also notice this spreads out pretty far towards the end of this five-day outlook. I think there is a good chance that this one could be a fish storm that heads out to sea. That's why I have a pretty... A significant curve northward in the cone there that would be again a best case scenario there is a chance this one really just avoids land which is really all we could all hope for uh, but that more southerly track is obviously the more impactful one as there's a lot of land uh in that track basically so we're going to need to watch this storm very very closely anyway for today's comment of the day i asked you guys do you think either none or both of these storms will become hurricanes and north america said i think at least one of them will become a hurricane and I have a gut feeling that could be correct. Uh, I think especially 98L has the best chance of becoming a hurricane here. So we'll have to watch and see. Anyway, for our patron highlights of the day, I thank you all for supporting the channel, uh, especially Mad Birds and Mark J, who are our diamond patrons, and also Donna Carnes, who is a platinum patron. I appreciate all of you. Uh, and if you would like to support the channel and end up on our end screen here, you could do so by supporting the channel. Uh, you can click the link in the description or the pinned comment down below and find our Patreon page where you can find exciting content and also you could help support the channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.